I'm Ben Cumby. I'm one of our developer engineers inside of the Palm Global Business Unit of Hewlett Packard. Uh, before I get into the talk, I do want to highlight that a lot of the slides here are going to have a blue background. The legend around HP is that their standard template has a blue background, so when people go and print slides, they use more of the blue color ink, and that apparently is the most expensive ink for our printers. So I'm kind of ditching that trend a little bit by going with white backgrounds for a lot of things, but thought you might like that. Um, so let's get started here. For those of you who aren't familiar with WebOS, um, this is an operating system that was developed within Palm. Uh, it got launched in 2009 with the Palm Pre device. And you know, later this year, we have a whole series of new devices, uh, the touchpad, the HP Pre 3, and the HP Veer. They're all coming out with various versions of WebOS. Um, this talk is going to be about the Enyo framework, but I guess to give you some context in Enyo, I need to talk a little bit about what's on WebOS underneath it. So this is the big, boring architecture diagram. Um, key things to take away here is that when you think WebOS, what you're actually running is pretty much a web browser. Um, you pull out a WebOS phone like this one here, and the actual user interface is a bunch of cards. You can think of those cards as tabs in the web browser. And so each application is actually its own web page, running JavaScript, running HTML. Uh, we're using WebKit, and V8 is kind of the engine below that. Now, we also support other kinds of applications. I mean, we're not strictly JavaScript. We also can, you can compile some C++ code and use that too. But most of the key applications in the platform, all the ones that we ship as productivity tools, lots of the ones in our catalog are based around JavaScript. Now, looking up here, you'll see over to the side, we also talk about JavaScript services. In addition to using V8 inside of WebKit, we're also using it inside of our Node.js runtime. And we actually employ several key people on the Node project, like Tim Caswell, who talked earlier today. Node is actually being used to you know, give you interface to system services, um, let applications write their own services. So you know, when your card's not on display, you're still going to have something syncing to websites in the background and you know, dealing with all that. But what I'm mainly here to talk about today is kind of this part over here, the web applications, our runtime, and this new thing that we call Enyo. So the story about Enyo begins with Aries, and Aries begins with Mojo. So going back to 2009, the Palm Pre comes out. Mojo is the JavaScript framework that we ship on it. And Mojo, Mojo is designed basically for this 320 by 480 screen. It's designed um, around a lot of HTML templates. It's basically, it's built on top of prototype, and then we took a lot of templating stuff we built. We built a lot of widgets. But in order to do anything in Mojo, you basically had to write some HTML over here. You had to write some JavaScript over here. You had to hook things up, make sure it all works. About the only way you could get things done, at least at first, is look at an example and kind of copy and modify that. Not very intuitive. Um, I mean, it required an O'Reilly book to figure it out. So you know, we had Mojo out for a few months. Uh, we had some internal tools people. Um, we had Ben and Dion, who did the Bestman editor over at Mozilla, came over. Um, they brought a lot of Bestman ideas and kind of collaboration with us. And so some engineers headed up by Matt McNulty, who's now our framework team lead, uh, Scott Miles, and Steve Orville, who had done Opus JS, built this toolkit called Aries. So if you never use Aries, it's go to aries.palm.com. It's a web-based IDE for building mobile applications. So you can go through, you can you know, design your thing by dragging widgets onto you know, a, a phone-looking screen, but then you can also double-click on things and it brings up a JavaScript editor. You can define what all your methods do. It's great. I mean, for building a lot of simple applications, you can do things very quickly, and you know, people loved it. But in order to build Aries, we had to kind of build this shim, this Opus JS shim on top of Mojo, and basically, it resulted in that every application had to download a few extra 100K of JavaScript. You had a lot of lag at runtime when things started up. And it just you know, wasn't the best experience. So as part of working on WebOS 2 and just looking at how can we improve the platform, how can we scale up to a lot of different devices, the team decided, hey, let's build a new framework. And it got named Ares. Or, sorry, got named Enyo. Ares, the god of war, Enyo, apparently Ares' sister. So, you know, the names work out pretty well. So, what Enyo gives you is the ability to do applications that look kind of like this. This is actually the original prototype application built as kind of a proof of concept of the framework. This is the email app. 
something that looks a lot like it is going to be shipping on the HP touchpad this summer. Um, a lot of apps that look like this are going to be shipping on the touchpad because we've kind of gone through and re-implemented all of our core applications in this new framework. And, you know, if you want to see it actually running on a touchpad, well, maybe I'll pull out one of these and hold it up and, you know, there's our email application running in Enyo on a touchpad. If you want to actually see some demos of some of the devices, you can find some of the HP people in the audience. They're the ones that don't have MacBooks. So let's get into a bit of you know, what's actually going on behind the hood here, or under the hood. Anatomy of an Enyo application. So an Enyo application is basically a bunch of HTML. It's a bunch of JavaScript. There's some metadata. Um, I'm going to just take you through a couple of quick slides on this. I'm not going to go line by line the code. But what we have is an appinfo.json, which is a bunch of metadata about the application. We've actually used this file since the beginning of WebOS. It's just a standard way of saying, here's your application title, here's your app icon, what's your version number. You know, no big whoop. Uh, key thing to note here is that we have a main. And that actually says, what is the HTML file that gets launched you know, in this card when the application starts up? Um, another thing is that type is web. The type is how we indicate what kind of application. Um, if, you're, if you built some C++ code and run it there, then the type would be PDK. Um, final thing is this UI revision 2. This is actually still kind of secret, but this is a flag that says that your application is able to handle the large size screen on the touchpad or other devices. If you don't have that set up, then it's going to run an emulation environment that looks like a phone, but you, know, you have a little phone screen in the middle of your tablet. That's not so much fun. Um, we have lots of doc options here. This is you know, part of our developer website. OK, depends.js. So every annual application has at least one of these. It's basically a file that lists what other files get pulled in. The neat thing about this is that the depends can actually reference a directory. And so this allows you to kind of build a module application where you're not just pulling in single files at a time, but maybe a whole other directory that has a bunch of things to you know, implement some key widget, implement some data service. OK, not a, not a big deal. Um, that depends. Now we have index.html. So you build a website, index.html, kind of the beginning of your website. What we've done here, two key things. First off, there's a script tag which actually pulls in the Enyo framework. And then we have this code here kind of in the middle that's all it's doing is it's creating a new object that's based on something you built in Enyo and rendering it into the document. This kind of pulls a key concept of Enyo. Whereas with Mojo, we had a lot of HTML, a lot of templating, a lot of like, you know, setting up a page and then going back in and replacing items as needed. Enyo is putting the control in JavaScript hands, not HTML. As you look in the framework, you'll see this pattern over and over where the actual kind of HTML that's in the DOM that's being generated is being done by JavaScript, not necessarily by the application developer. Um, another thing this actually does kind of interesting, as part of an optimization for mobile on the device, our WebKit has a lot of these kind of framework files that are built in, where when you use it in an application, you know, Instead of us having to go and parse all the code for the Enyo framework, we actually can kind of just tell V8 to pull in this precompiled file. However, we have the ability to say launch equal debug on that script tag, and that will tell it to go and actually pull in the original source code, which helps if you're trying to debug and figure out why you know, something down in the middle of the framework isn't acting the way you want. So the last file I'll go into here for this kind of hello world type application is, in fact, the hello world control. So, Enyo is built around the idea of a single inheritance object hierarchy. It's built around the idea that you have objects, and some of those objects are controls, and controls can own other controls. So for this very simple application, we've just defined a single control, and the contents of it are the string hello world. So this is not going to be a very exciting thing, but why don't we switch over to our browser here and see what this looks like. Hello world. OK. Now let's look at some more exciting things. So the philosophy of Enyo is basically kind of a set of things where I'm going to talk about some of the design ideas that guided us in building this framework, some of the trade-offs we made, and basically why we made some of the decisions we did. So first thing to note is that applications are a target. Uh, unlike frameworks like jQuery, which target websites, Enyo is entirely an application framework. So 
If you're going to use this, you're going to basically be building it to produce rich applications that pull data from databases, from web sources, and then show it to the user and give it some way to interact. You know, email application is kind of our standard, you know, you know, our standard bearer for this, but we've also used it to do contacts, to do um, photo viewers, to do a web browser. But apps are the kind of key target here. One of the big things about Enyo is that we reuse code through components. So, you know, instead of us, you know, having your index.html filled with here's a bunch of things about my app, you actually build up a component and then you render that component as your application. Give you an example of some of the ideas behind this. So, I move this mouse so we don't have that spinning cursor there. So, Enyo provides this kind system. A kind is basically our version of the word class. We can't use class by itself because that's the reserved word in JavaScript. So every kind is a parent kind going all the way back up to enyo.object, which is kind of the root of our whole tree. The key thing that this whole kind system gives is the ability to subclass an existing class and easily call the parent or the methods of the parent. So in doing this, we have this whole inherited method. And so the magic of inherit is that it will call your whatever the previous version of this that you overrode in your class. Um, then the other thing, um, object inherit is a property system or provides a property system. So when you're creating these objects, you have the ability of specifying properties, and then later on you can easily override the properties and you know, provide documentation what they are. Um, it also provides a kind of magical methods for setting, getting, and then noting when a property has changed which you know, works really well, especially if you're building some sort of um, online code building uh, UI layout type program where you want to actually you know, set a lot of properties based on drawing something on the editor on the screen rather than just writing code. We have components. That's the base of our kind of actual DOM object model. Components let you have a collection of other items that are owned by one. So an example is you have a dialog box. Well, instead of having to then define the dialog box has a list and then the list has all these items, you can actually kind of specify, here's the list, here's all the sub-items, but all of those are actually owned by the original dialog box, and it's easy to reference a lot of things even if you have a very complex structure. Another thing that we provide is this dollar sign hash. So instead of having to do a lot of complex methods to query, you just say this dot dollar sign dot whatever the name of the control you happen to have, and then you can call methods directly on it. Another of the key ideas behind Enyo is to support flexible layouts. One of the problems we had back in the original Palm Pre was, you know, everything was built for 320 by 480, but if we wanted to introduce a bigger screen device, we had to figure out, you know, suddenly either redesign everything. So how do we solve this? Well, we use the Flexbox CSS model that's been supported by WebKit for a while. It's starting to be supported by a lot of the other browsers. So horizontal boxes, vertical boxes, um, it's CSS properties for spacing, padding. All this stuff kind of combines to let us produce a flexible layout where if you change the screen size, which might just be as simple as rotating the device one way or the other, then all of a sudden the layout kind of happens for you. You don't have to do a lot of extra calculation. Now, recently we've discovered there's some issues with flex boxes. They tend to work great at the high level of the application, but if you have like a complex list, a lot of, you know, basically if you nest things way too far down, then you can run into some speed issues. But we've been writing code to basically do kind of fixed versions of these flex boxes for cases where you need to be flexible, but you don't actually need to reflow all that often. One of the things that Enyo does is it favors code generation and layout tools over kind of static HTML. The idea is here that you know, your JavaScript is actually going to be creating HTML that's part of all your various scenes rather than the designer specifying everything out you know, to the div. But this allows some really nice object-oriented encapsulation. So you know, if you have a ob JavaScript object that's going to generate this HTML for you, then you can stick that object in a tree, and then we can generate the entire scene at one time and you know, avoid having to do a necessarily a lot of DOM work to continually add new items into this page. Also, we really like the idea of being able to do IDEs, being able to produce layout editors for these web applications. And you know, 
right now our Aries tool is only supporting Mojo, but in the future we're you know, fully intending on providing that same kind of IDE experience for Enyo apps. Example of application structure, kind of the JavaScript layout of an application rather than HTML. This is just taken from one of our basic applications, which is a documentation viewer. So you know, when you're looking through figuring out where everything is in the Enyo framework, you actually use an Enyo application that goes and reads the Enyo source to produce these docs for you. And so you know, here we're kind of creating an app menu. We have you know, various properties defined on it. Um, the app menu owns a flex box, which then produces other things. And it basically, it kind of nests all the way down here. But basically, all of these things in this whole nesting tree are actually owned by the one thing that has that top-level components array, which means you, know, you have a lot of flexibility in how events come back. And basically, the owner of all these is able to handle all the events generated by its children. And that provides kind of a really nice event model for the app. Another of the values of Enyo is that you know, we prefer JavaScript over HTML. Kind of going back to we'd rather generate the HTML source from JavaScript rather than write it directly. We also believe very much that JavaScript is going to be quicker than WebKit. Um, one of the things we do is that by having this whole JavaScript object tree, is we're able to cache a lot of the things that normally you'd have to query the DOM to find out about. And you know, over time, we've seen V8, we've seen TraceMonkey, we've seen all these engines get much quicker, do a much better job of handling memory. Whereas WebKit gets a lot of new features, but speed improvements aren't so much. So the more we're able to kind of push a lot of these decisions into the JavaScript layer, which is running, you know, jitted, running almost as fast as, you know, pure compiled code, it makes the applications run faster on the device rather than having to go and make queries into the big DOM and, you know, wait for whatever complex things have to happen in that engine. Just kind of, you know, a further application of this, caching the DOM in the JavaScript. This actually ties into something that we call the virtual DOM, which is basically this idea that when we're trying to generate a scene for an application, instead of us going in and make, calling a bunch of DOM methods to you know, insert object, modify attribute, insert object, modify attribute, add child, add child, add child, so on, we're actually going and we're generating a really long string. So like every control can generate the HTML string for it, and we can nest those strings inside of each other. And so ultimately, we end up having this big string of HTML. And then we just do one set in our HTML call. And you know, WebKit, one thing it does very fast is parse HTML. So instead of doing a bunch of DOM methods into the, into the WebKit, we end up doing one set method. It goes, parses this HTML really quickly, and generates a scene very quickly for us. It works out pretty well in practice. Another value of the annual framework is supporting devices and supporting the desktop. So Mojo pretty much was only usable on device. You could, you know, we have an emulator that you can run. You can kind of do some work in WebKit, you know, maybe Safari or Chrome, but it didn't work that great. However, with Enyo, we, we designed it originally actually in Chrome, in Safari, and then pushed it to the device. So all along, the idea was that you can build your application as much as possible in the desktop and then push it to device. On the desktop, you have great debugging tools, you have great profiling tools, you can monitor what's happening over the network and then get it to the device, and things should tend to work the same way. That's, you know, generally it's mean, you know, building the framework to work well on the desktop, but also, you know, making sure that behavior doesn't change a lot. Um, another final kind of value of Enyo is supporting the special features that we have on WebOS. Um, back in that architecture diagram, I talked about services. Well, on our device, what we do is we have kind of the system partitioned into the user interface, what's running inside a web kit, what's shown as cards, and we have services, which are kind of basically background processes. They talk over a Palm system bus, which can be thought of kind of similar to HTTP, except that it has the advantages of everything's authenticated on the device, a service can you know, deny access based on what particular process, what application ID is trying to talk to it. And services also can do subscriptions where you subscribe to you know, some data from a database mo being modified. And you know, instead of just having to keep ask over and over again, you get pushed to your application whenever that data changes. 
So we have full support for that. Um, and also, you know, applications can provide their own services based on Node. We also provide a mocking facility where if you're testing on the desktop, you basically provide kind of data values for these services. So your application can call the same calls it would make on the device, but instead of you know, having to have a device connected, you can just look at a data file stored with your application and send that back. That's how we do things like test out our email application on the desktop and not have to have a device hooked up. Um, we support notifications. Actually, it's one of the real strengths of WebOS. Um, I wish I had a projector here for this because, well, if you can look, you see like in the middle of my screen, I have a couple of notifications there just about my own email and accounts things that's going on. In, in actually, what's happening inside WebOS is that applications, in addition to their own cards, can create these separate notifications, which actually kind of are their own HTML web windows, and put data into them, and then we have a whole way of stacking that up so that you, know, you can view all the various notifications from your different applications at once, dismiss them if they're not important to you, and move on with your life. Multiple card and window management, important part of WebOS. Um, applications can, in addition to just having kind of the main tab they display on, you know, occupy other tabs. And you know, basically supports this by letting you create a different index HTML or you know, start HTML page for each one. But then the different windows can share data between each other, either by posting messages back and forth or just through a common root window that they can all talk to. Um, we have an iframe-based method for doing cross-app launching. Uh, we use that internally in the system for doing things like providing access to the file system. You know, we have like a pr special privileged file manager app and then other apps can you know, basically stick it into an iframe inside their view. The user interacts with it, and then that sends a message back to the original app that invokes it, saying, here's what got picked by the user. And then we also support um, object tag-based hybrid applications. This is a method where an application can you know, have part of its functionality done in JavaScript, part of it done in compiled C++ code, and then that's actually invoked by putting an object tag with a special MIME type. That causes this whole separate process to be created where the C++ code's running, then that can be displayed as part of your JavaScript application. Internally, we're using it to do things like parse uh, Microsoft Word files for QuickOffice or handle DRM books for the Amazon Kindle app. So Enyo is a platform. Um, we've been doing a lot of work on this since we originally announced it. Uh, kind of we first showed it back in February 9th at our big developer event, and since then it just gets more and more fleshed out. So if you actually want to learn more about the Enyo API, um, I suggest you start reading some of these classes. Um, I'll start reading them to you. Enyo activity button, Enyo Ajax contacts, Enyo Alva. Ah, ah, okay, okay. I'm not actually going to read all this. We have a very nice documentation viewer. But kind of the, these are the kind of the key areas that we're tackling in the framework. Language instinctions, kind of the standard stuff you get from any JavaScript framework, binding, all that. Um, the OOP system, which I talked about earlier with objects and components. DOM management, which is basically our whole system of generating HTML code, caching it in JavaScript, and then outputting it all at once to generate pages. We have input controls, um, not just standard like wrapper around input, but all the various styled things that kind of give our WebOS platform its own distinctive look, everything from sliders, you know, all that. Containers can include things like panes, um, pop-ups, dialogues, all these things that you want to kind of organize your controls in an application. List and repeater is an area we've spent a lot of time on because a lot of dealing with these heavy data applications is how do you make a big list? Let's say it's email messages, say it's database records. Well, you don't necessarily want to create you know, all these DOM objects just for the list. So we have virtual ways of that where we page in a bit at a time and kind of keep the scrolling going, but you know, we don't necessarily have to have all that in the, in the actual web page at once. Services are an area I've already mentioned. Uh, how do you interface with that? We also have a whole globalization structure which not only tells you information about the region that you're running in, but also provides a way for your application to, to have localized resources so you can replace strings based on what language you're running in. And then finally, you know, very extensive support for the WebOS platform. So now the fun part. Let me show you a few demos of some of the things. Uh, since I don't have a projector set up for the device, I'm actually going to run these in Chrome. So we've already showed Hello World. Next thing I'm going to show here, this is just our API browser. Um, we have a list running over here. 
um, with a couple of panes, switch between that. You can go through and you know, pick a random component. All this is being generated on the fly by the actual application browser based on the source code that's you know, in the annual framework included with this. Next one I'll show you here is a sample called Style Matters. This is basically one that we include that lets you kind of browse through all the various controls that we provide, look and see how they work. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff we have is kind of boring stuff, like, oh, here's a fixed header. OK, that's great. Um, but you know, we get into more interesting things like dialogues. Oh, we want a dialogue? Well, that will pop up from the bottom of the screen. Yay. We want a two-button dialogue. OK. Error dialogue. How, how do we do with all that? Next sample here is, um, this is actually just more of a kind of looking at the way various controls look in Enyo. So this kind of lets us kind of very quickly list through a lot of various you know, input fields, dividers, search engines. You have the pop-up for picking integers, for picking various things. You know, this basically, we're showing this in Chrome, but these work exactly the same way on device. Well, except that you're touching instead of you know, using a mouse. This is an example of the drag and drop system we have in Enyo. So tapping and holding on this suddenly gives you a little icon, which will follow your finger to a drag target. Um, here is showing virtual repeater. So the virtual repeater is a special kind which lets you um, repeat a whole lot of elements, basically what you would do for a list. But it doesn't necessarily generate the entire list at once. It generates a page of that at a time. And as, the, you, know, as you touch and scroll through, you know, we have the kind of a inertial scrolling. Well, it's going and it's you know, creating new ones to put at this in, getting rid of the ones at the top, so your actual page is never overloaded. This is really important on mobile devices because the more objects you have on the page, the more memory you use, the slower things get. Next over is um, pop-ups, just showing some of the things. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of work with CSS transformation, so you know, just showing a pop-up, a modal one, no problem. Maybe you want to have it animated popping in. That's great. Um, you know, some more transitions. Even you know, the fancy pop-up, which you probably would never use in an application, but it's there kind of like you know, the, the fancy storm window shutter animations in Video Toaster back in the day. Yep, the fancy rotating pop-up. Ooh. Um, this is an example. These actually are sliding panes, which is a very important part of our UI look and feel. You know, if you're working with an application on this, you wanted the ability to both you know, be able to see lots of levels of it, but also zoom in. So what we've done is, if you can see down here, there's kind of a you know, whole sliding effect. So you can go full screen with that, tap once, and it pops out. Tap again, that pops out. And the idea is that you, know, you drill through, maybe in an email application, you drill through, you know, here's your list of email providers. Next is a list of you know, whatever items you have in that folder. One over is the actual reading pane. Another type control that we have in the annual framework is just panes. If you'd played with WebOS before, there's very much the idea of scenes and like switching between you know, one scene to another, back gestures. Well, panes are kind of the way we're organizing this in Enyo now. So what we've done here is just showing you, you, know, you can you know, switch between various things. They'll take up full screen. And this is actually a flex box where you have a header object defined, a footer, and then the pane is there in the middle. Uh, final thing I'm going to show, this is our carousel control. And the idea with carousel is that this is like um, you're in a photo viewer application the user wants to swipe through. So, you know, just with a quick swipe of the finger, move back and forth between these various pages. And these are all being generated virtually on the fly. So that's just a few examples. I mean, this is all very much developer demo. If you actually want to see, you know, the way applications work, um, one way to do that is to join our developer program. You can go to developer.palm.com and get a lot of details on this. Um, WebOS 3.0, which is the first one that ships with Enyo, is currently in early access. So if you mail to pdc at palm.com saying, hey, I want early access to Enyo, we'll get you all the details. Right now, it's just a simple NDA, but all that's going to be coming open, open to the public once uh, the touchpad ships this summer. Um, 
We're really excited about this. Um, we feel like the touchpad is kind of our big chance to bring the whole WebOS experience to a much wider market. Um, and you know, Enya is going to be coming to phones and other devices going forward in the future. And we really love to get your feedback as the JavaScript community on what, you know, what we can do well and how to improve everything. So a big cheesy thank you transition for spending a few minutes with me today. Have a great JS Conf. Uh, you know there are planes, Chris. We didn't have to take a wagon to Oregon.